3% of the world population controls 97% of the wealth. And the people who have the money, they usually don't even have any kind of degree because they're working from their heart and they know how to be clear of what they want and how to make a plan to make it happen because they're not coming from up here in their head. You know who doesn't have that money? Take a look at the average income for a college professor. Take a look at all the people who have the double masters, the double doctorates. They're not the ones who are raking in the wealth. And what's the wealth for anyway? Is it just to have the money or is it what the money does for you? Hi, I'm Reverend Ellie Bierman, and I welcome you here today for Let's Get Metaphysical Show, all about showing you the forces out of your conscious awareness that are driving you in every moment to show you how your guides, your angels, the entities who are in fact guiding all your choices, how to recognize them so that you can take on your life, the life you want. Now let's get back to the show. So what it's all about is knowing what to do, learning what to do, how to make a plan. You see, I studied years and years and years and years and years with all the big names, all the thought leaders, all the people who make our world work. And that's been the case for a hundred years and sometimes thousands of years, depending on who we're reading and studying. And you know what the main thing to know? Who are you? And if you're here today, by discovering who you are, because you're not who you think you are, and you're most definitely not who others think you are. So you're a spirit. And your spirit is eternal. It's not that you have a soul. It's that you are a soul. It's that you are an eternal soul spirit that goes on from lifetime to the next lifetime to the next lifetime. And when you're living in that truth and you're coming from your heart, that's when you know how to connect with the universe that then can fulfill your requests, your desires, because you want to know what to do and you want to plan to do it. So chances are better than even that you know what you want. You probably even know what you need to do to get it. However, what's stopping you? And you probably even know what's stopping you, but it's stopping you. And that's why you're not living the life you really want to live. And that's why you're here with us today. You know that Bob Proctor had very wisely stated a hundred years from now, maybe even sooner, people will look back upon and consider the way that we're treating our children, the way that we're educating them in the schools. They're going to consider it cruelty because it's stifling a kid's creativity. It's stifling a kid's imagination to do, to be different. Not everybody thinks the same way. I was lucky when I was growing up in school because I understood the method and the process that the teachers were using. But how many kids 
didn't, their brains didn't work that way. Their brains didn't process that way. Did that make them dumb? Did that make them learning disabled? No, it was teaching disabled. It's the problem in the schools, not with the kids. I learned that very, very firsthand because I had always been at the top of my class and I was in college and I was injured when I was working on my doctorate and I had a really bad brain injury. Suddenly I knew what it was like not to be able to comprehend things, not to be able to find the words that I knew were in there and I didn't know how to reach them, to be struggling to learn things I learned what that's like. And suddenly I realized all these people who are labeled learning disabled or people who don't want to learn, oh, here's a good one, or people who are lazy. None of that's true. None of that is true. The fault doesn't lie in the kid. The fault lies in the method that's being used at all levels of education. I remember when I was in college and I was taking graduate levels courses, I had a professor who gave his lectures and then he gave his tests. And if you didn't respond to his questions in the word for word, exact word for word that he had used in the lectures, he got a poor grade, even if the responses said the identical information. That was his ego. Probably a lot of teachers and professors out there with ego. There are a lot of really good professors out there. It's just a style that's making it actually impossible for some people to be able to get through it. As I said, when I had that brain injury, my mind no longer worked the way it used to. So take a look at your life and take a look at how you treat others, not just kids, but other adults. When you know a kind of job that you want, you go in and you create a relationship and an understanding. And you do that with kids when you're talking with young people. They're real people and they deserve your honor and respect. And oh my goodness, they also don't have this thing up here in the brain. The prefrontal lobes, that's where reasoning happens. They don't have that developed until they're through adolescence. That's around 25 years old. So when people say to their kid, go up to your room, think about what you did, because the parent didn't know how to talk about and talk with instead of talking at. Kid goes up to their room. They don't know what the heck that means. Think about it. They go up to their room and hopefully they play and do something to let them feel better because parents are usually shaming their kids. But their kids are doing the best they can. What's going on for you? How do you get along in a learning situation? And learning situations that really count are not the ones that happen in a classroom. The whole world is a classroom. And when you understand, you always take care of yourself first. And then you want to have a relationship with other people where you know them, where you honor them. And some of them will be able to reason, but you know what? Some of them never will. Does that make them less of a person? Does that make them less valuable? Of course not. Of course not. Now, one of the books that a lot of this information came from, well, one of my favorites, because I do have lots and lots of books by the masters and very many books and programs from Bob Proctor. But when you're taking advantage of Audible's free trial, 
The book I recommend that you choose today is The Art of Living. And in fact, the quote that I was talking about before about how schools are what's hurting the kids, he opens that book. Bob Proctor and his partner wrote that book. And he opens the book with that story and has some other really prime examples that really teach you the difference between learning and knowing how to be a human being in society. Because even in the workplace, or especially in the workplace, instead of fighting or trickery to try and get to another level, or instead of thinking, I hate that person, or I'm going to beat that person in the competition today, what if instead you create a relationship? And here's one you may not know. If you're angry with somebody, if you think somebody hurt you, send them love. Forgiveness is about thanking the person for doing what you think hurt you so that you get to become somebody you've never been before. Send them love. Pick up the book, The Art of Living, or another really, really good book to consider is Summerhill. Now, when I was talking with Mayana Kingery on our last show, and she was talking about how what's a healthy way to run a classroom, to run a program. Establish new learning centers that are nature-based. And you know, small little learning centers all over the place. And they have to have gardens that the kids are involved in. They have to have animals and they have to have real life. And, you know, ways to learn from nature and ways to go see new things. And so learning centers instead of elementary schools. And then by the time a student is in middle school age, they're going to be ready to kind of focalize their attention into what interests them. They'll know, hey, I want to go study the bees more, or I want to go study whales, or I want to draw buildings and do architecture. I want to do new ways of, you know, this kind of artwork or this kind of task, you know? Yeah. So then they can be like put into programs that support what they want to learn. So the middle school level could still have the buildings. You don't have to get rid of the buildings, but you could have centers within the school that address different subject matters. And then by the time they're in high school, at least by 10th grade, they're going to be ready to go and be an apprentice somewhere under a master and learn and and mass and you know get their level of personal mastery instead of sticking kids in classrooms for 12 years. I mean, we're just totally programming them in a wrong way. We're not teaching them how to think and how to well, use their important. intuition. The education systems that are, still prevail were to train people to work in the factories and take orders and definitely not think for themselves. Right. So it, it's just so good to hear your involvement in it because I know anything that you're involved in or why. <laughs> and I remembered when I was a teenager reading the book Summerhill. Now, Summerhill was a school and it actually started in Germany in 1921. It's where you go to school and you do what's interesting to you. And then when you're older, when you're ready, and you want to specialize in an area, you know what that is, because you've been doing that, because you've had the freedom to discover what you love to do. Always look for what you love to do, and you're talented at it. Make either Summerhill or The Art of Living, your choice in your Audible free trial. And definitely look around 
because I have a, mm, probably a couple dozen books from all those masters who I talked about on the last story. Because I, I have a whole library of books by all the masters who I talked with you about a couple shows back. Also, join our Facebook group. Go ahead, ask questions. Get the extras I put in there. And on that topic, when you come into ALITLC.club, you're going to see some pretty special stuff, including a whole series of my interviewing Thrive experts. These are 11 people who had very, very difficult circumstances, and they chose not to give in and give up but to come back strong, to be who they knew who they really are and who they really want to be and make a difference in the lives of others. And the only place you can get that series is inside ALITLC.club. I really look forward to being here with you and to know you don't have to struggle, because I know how to help you. Struggle's a waste of energy. And it's weighing down and eating up all of your health and well-being. Struggle and suffering, they're optional. Be sure you contact me. And to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment. Because nothing in your life ever happens out there. It all comes into your body as impulses, as electrical signals. And your body is able to interpret them so you can experience all of those feelings to see, taste, touch, smell. I look forward to being here with you next time.